hey, baby, I want to know who, who, if you'll be my girl. Hi, folks, this is Bruce Chanel. It doesn't matter where you're from, you're going to love listening to iconfetch.com. Welcome to Icon Fetch, the web's premier music interview show. Now, here's your host, Tony Peters. Uh, Delbert McClinton has made a career out of doing whatever he wanted. He got his start blowing harmonica on Bruce Chanel's classic Hey Baby. Hey! That was 1962, before the Beatles invaded America. In fact, that little old band from Liverpool actually opened for Delbert and Bruce on an early gig. Well, not long after, Delbert began leading his own band and creating a body of music that defies classification, all the while winning awards in blues, country, and rock. Giving it up for your love. Delbert's just released his 19th studio album, Prick of the Litter, and it's easily one of the best of his long career. Whatever happened to romance? Is it gone or is it just me? I like loving, like loving used to be. And he's hitting the road to support it as well, so to talk about it, we welcome back to the show Delbert McClinton. How are you, man? Boy, I'm better now after that intro. <laughs> That's all right. Just trying to butter you up a little bit. That's what they are trying to do, man. You know, you know, we we try anyway. So, you know, it's it's been a little while since you put out a record. Um, you know, I mean, you and Glenn put out a record, uh, Blind, Cripple, and Crazy. That was like 2013. Yeah. And then this one's got some different flavors going on, a little Texas swing, jazz, soul kind of thing. Uh, I mean, where where did all of this kind of the idea behind the direction for the record come from? Well, you know, I grew up in the 40s. I heard all the war music. Uh, I heard Johnny Mercer all day, every day on the radio, Nat King Cole, uh, Sarah Vaughn, uh, Louis Armstrong, and on and on and on and on. You couldn't help but hear it. That's, that was the radio. And uh, and my mother's youngest sister, who was a teenager when I was a kid, she had all the race records, you know. Yeah, nice, like uh, like Billy Holiday kind of thing, Dinah Washington, that kind of stuff. Holiday, uh, Charles Brown, you yeah, know, all of them. The, 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 so uh, so you know, I, I don't know. I soaked it all up. I've been singing since I was two years old. You know, that's just something that's always gone on with me. And uh, I grew up and grew into it. But the night time is the right time. That's when I feel it's easy to fall in love in San Miguel. Yeah, that, that, so, so you, uh, you've got kind of a... a group of guys the the self-made men for for the record here uh but i mean some of these guys you've been playing with for a while right well all of them this is the band i work with okay i hate to call them my band because i'm just a part of this band uh these guys are brilliant they are exciting and i have great admiration for them and we all have great admiration for each other and that's a difficult thing to find anywhere but we've been working on doing this for the last three years. Where, uh, it started out by me and Bob Britt and, and Michael Choice. That's a guitar player and a bass player. Uh, we got together to see, see what it would be like if we wrote together, which we had never done. We did it three Wednesdays in a row and, a row and got three great songs. It's hard enough to live my life without somebody Somebody else pulling the string. So we all looked at each other and said, well, let's do this some more. So uh, I've got a, a, a place in Mexico that I go hide out sometime. And we went down there two or three times and spent a week or ten days and kicked back with no interference and wrote the rest of the record. 
Nice, nice. Now, now, when when you're sitting around writing, it's one thing, but as far as, did, were you hearing these arrangements as you were writing the songs with the with the trumpet and the kind of jazz arrangements? Well, you know, at that point in time, we're not thinking about the, the, the horn parts, although we know they're going to be there. Okay, all right. But uh, the thing we want, we just we just wanted to play this as, as as just like we felt it, and we did. Now, was there one particular song uh, of the bunch that got you kind of rolling in that direction, kind of thing? Like, okay, now now we because I mean, sometimes when you're laying out the framework for an album, you kind of need a direction sometimes. Well, I've had the direction in my mind for for years. Okay, all right. I, I've always wanted. I, I, I love. Uh, uh, Sinatra, you know, oh. people, people who really sang, you know, absolutely sang rather than shout or mumble, you know, and and I that goes back for me to my childhood where I learned all of those songs because they were so clever. You listen to the, the lyrics of, of Johnny Mercer, for, for example. It, it, he, he wrote, it ain't necessarily so. Right, yeah. Right. Here's a line that says, uh, uh, Noah, he lived in well. No, he, didn't. he made his home in that fish's abdomen. Oh, Jonah, he lived in the well. He made his home in that fish's abdomen. Jonah, he lived in the well. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, no, I mean that 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 was an art back then. There was an art to songwriting. I mean, you know, you it's go an back. Art now. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. An art now. I mean, you know, that's why I did it is because I love that kind of art. Right. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you've done records where you basically got three chords and uh, you know, guitar, bass, and drums, and you're just going for it. And you know, this has got some you know some different elements. You got songs that have more than three chords on them. You know, <laughs> well, you know, I do what I want to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And who's going to stop me? Right. Sometimes life gets so absurd. The trick is learning how to handle the curve. Get a grip, don't lose your nerve. Everything will be rosy. So you are joined by um, some guests as well. Um, and, and in fact, um, you know, the, the opening track, Don't Do It. Don't do it. Must be something I can do. Baby, please don't do it. I can make it up to you. Uh, you got a couple of uh, folks there. Uh, how, how'd you get uh, Luann Barton on the record? You about the meanest old man I know. You won't ever, ever see me no more. Well, Jimmy and Luann are, are two of my favorite people. I've known them forever. And as a matter of fact, we're playing Austin tonight, and they're going to come out and, and, and do the song with us. Sweet. Awesome. And we're talking about Jimmy Vaughn. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah got Jimmy Vaughn and, 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 and Luann Barton. And she's singing the chorus on, on Don't Do It. And when we recorded the song, uh, I said, well, we got to figure out who's going to be the woman. And Bob put his hand up and said, it's got to be Luann Bart. <laughs> nice. And I said, absolutely, without a doubt, that's who it needs to be. And I called her, and she we came, we brought the track to Austin and went over to Wire Studios, and, and, and Jimmy and Luann came over, and we did it, you know, and, and had a big time. Had a lot of fun. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, you know, she's the one kicking you to the curb in the song, right? So. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Right. So that's good. So, uh, I mean, you got some, uh, some doing some different things on here. Middle of nowhere, you show off a, a falsetto. And it scared me to death to record it that way because I don't have that voice except rarely. And so I haven't done it live yet. I'm still Okay, all right, all right, all right. Well, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. So, right. Uh, but uh, to do a falsetto, uh, you're really putting your, what you call it, on the line. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Because because if you screw a note up in falsetto, it is as bad as it gets. <laughs> right. I mean, you know. Right. So anyway, but you know, uh, I'm just gonna have to suck it up and do it. And, sure. And uh, and I think once I do it successfully, I believe I, I practice it all the time prior to. Right, right. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Now, I mean, was this something that you sang it straight and it just didn't have the same oh, feel or what? No, we had, it was the first night we got to Mexico. There were five of us, actually, or four of us, four of us. Uh, me, and Bob Britt, and uh, Kevin Kendry, and Glenn Clark. Okay. So uh, we were sitting outside, you know, just fooling around, looking for a direction. And uh, Glenn was talking about something. He said, I I, I was in the middle of nowhere. And I said, that's the title. Let's use that. Let's go from there. (laughs) And and that's what you do when you, when you, when you, when you find people that, that spark each other, you know, and, and Hey, that's a good idea. Let's, let's, let's work on that. So it's, it's exhilarating. It's exhilarating. It's great fun. And, and do it with friends. It just don't get any better. Right. No, absolutely. Now, um, you know, you even kind of do, I don't know what you're going to call it, rapping or something, kind of on the Neva song. What can you tell me about that? Neva picked the peaches, made her own pie dough. Make the peach pie we're dying for. That's the kind of woman I want to know. I keep her with me where I go. Well, we needed a... A, we kicked two songs out that just never really got, uh, never really got any satisfaction from them, and we needed a song to finish this up. And and Bob, who reads my mind a lot, he says, "What's that little thing you were you were that you told me you? I wrote that song in the feel of a Jimmy Reed song, and I did it because I was listening to Jimmy Reed one day, and he he's got a song called Ain't No Big Deal. Yeah, okay, yeah." His lyrics are so strong, but that you can't understand them. <laughs> and it's beautiful the way right. he does it. Right. Uh, and a lot of his songs, you got to dig. And if you dig and pay attention, he says some of the coolest stuff. Anyway. He starts off this record with about three lines that are told you just can't understand them, but it sounds great. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's got nothing to do with language. It's got to do with his voice. Yeah. It's the, it was him and the groove, man. Jimmy Reed was all yeah. about the groove too. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was he was deep in it with all of this. Uh, he was saying something, but it's just in, uh, you can't uh, you know what it is. Right. Anyway, that got me going, so I wrote. Uh, Neva picked a peach and made her own pie. Though. Baked a piece of pie we're dying for. Right. And I was playing it like Jimmy Reed. Dang, 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 dang. And Neva picked a peach and made her own pie. Dog. And uh, Bob says, well, what about that song? And I said, well, it's not finished. He says, well, finish it. <laughs> I, needed one, I needed one verse. Right. So we did, and then we were sitting there just... just uh, just sitting there coasting and uh bob started uh, playing that beat or somebody did and i started singing it that way and uh we recorded it about 15 minutes later wow it just kind of happened man that's the well that's what happens when it's good it just happens you know right yeah you don't have to you know, all you got to do is expose yourself to it right yeah, and I mean, you know, you get. I'm, I'm sure there, at some point or another, there's been time where you know you're on your 37th take and you're like, man, this is ridiculous. Just going to drop this. You know, you either it either happens or it ain't happening. You can't force it, kind of thing. So no, you can't. And these days, like I said, we, we dropped two songs that I still have great hope for, but they're not right yet. Right. And we tried to record them, and and it, there's just there was there was no magic there. So I said, well, we'll let's sideline these. You know. Right. Right. I'm going to ask you about a, a couple of tunes here. Pull, pulling the strings, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things going on that one. Life's a bitch, yet so sublime. I'm going nowhere, but I'm making good time. 
This might kill me, but I'll be all right if I can find a way to get her out of my mind. Uh, were you ever much of a, like a Mose Allison guy or anything like that? Or uh... I'm the biggest Mose Allison guy you know. All right, nice, nice. I love that guy. All right. Oh, he's the best. In fact, I tried to get a hold of him about seven or eight years ago. I wanted him to come play on my cruise. And I even had a guy that knew him that gave me his phone number. But uh, I, he never got back to oh, me. And now, man. now it's too late. Jimmy. Yeah, it is too late. I, I got a chance to see him, uh, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago. He came to Dayton, and I am so glad I did because, man, he was just... Whew. Well, he was a magic guy. He, uh, Well, he's, he's Mo's out. Yeah, and the wit, the wit that he had is just unparalleled, man. You just can't, you just can't teach that. You can't just. I know no, no, you can't. It's uh, he's a very gifted guy, you know. Absolutely. So, um, I, I have to ask you about a couple of tunes. I mean, most of them you wrote. Now, Jones for you is one you didn't write. I gave up meat. I just have salad. No swinging jazz. It's only ballad. Nothing salty and nothing sweet. I skip it all from milk to wheat. I got a trainer and a diet guy. Sprouts and protein shakes, that's all I buy. I jog in the park all day, that's what I do. I lie still Jones for you. Why don't you tell me about that one? Well, uh, several years ago, Kevin McKendry and myself went to New York. Uh, I have a good friend who played with me back in the 60s who has become the world's famous funk jazz drummer, Mike Clark. Okay. And uh, Mike and I have been uh, had reconnected with each other and, what you know, we've always been close friends and... Uh, we just, I decided, I said, you know, why don't we uh, go into the studio and just see what happens if we just fool around. And he had the place in, in, in Brooklyn we could, we could get into, and he brought Jerry Z with him, who's, who's the organ player and who's also kicking bass on, on the Hunter's Zone, and Tim Wynette, who's a trumpet player. Okay. Well, Tim said, I got a song you might like. And he played it for me, and I said, let's record it right now. And uh, we did. And I think it is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. I mean, you know, I don't eat meat, only salad, no no jazz, swing and jazz, only ballads. I mean, that's... that's... Yeah, don't miss my mushrooms or fish and gluten. I feel <laughs> for you. Oh, it's great. Oh, man, that is, that is just... Oh, that's a great lyric. That You know, and that... That that is, I mean, you talk about Johnny Mercer and all that. There's the wit there of that classic kind of stuff, man. It's just... Oh, of course. So yeah, th- well they weren't just they weren't just banging and shouting. Right, exactly, exactly. So uh, the the lead off the the single that you put out, uh, like loving used to be, man. What uh, what can you tell me about that one? I like a lot of things that lovers used to do. I like holding hands. And pushing woo. Whatever happened to the romance? Is it gone or is it just me? I like loving like loving used to be. That's one of the three Wednesday songs. Okay, all right. And, uh, uh, Bob started out playing. Well, we were just sitting there, just sitting there, you know, getting ready to get ready. And as all guitar players do, he starts strumming something. And uh, and he and I seem to be so in touch. Well, I feel this with all of these guys. But Bob starts doing something, and I start saying, just bam, you know. And it's 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 wild. It's crazy because he starts playing something, and 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 I start responding to it vocally. 
And and was that something, was another kind of a nugget of an idea? I mean, that sounds like something that somebody would say, you know. Oh, I like loving like loving used to be kind of thing. Well, I don't know. He started playing this music, and the first thing that came out of my mouth was, uh, uh, I like a lot of things that lovers used to do. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. I like holding hands and pitching woo. And, and it was just, you know, uh, the rhyme is, 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 always important to me uh to everybody i suppose but uh you gotta make you gotta love words i love words absolutely i love words and uh i mean that doesn't mean i'm educated uh, uh that way but i love words that you can where well, you can take them and, and twist them and make them rhyme with something else <laughs> yep, absolutely. It's a gift. It's it, it's it's it is an art, man, and it's uh, it's it's great stuff. So, all right, another one that you did not write, and the oldest song on the record is "The Hunt Is On." I'm trying to find a woman that wants to grow old with me. I'm trying to find a woman that wants to grow old with me. I want to settle down, try to raise my family. Well, the Hunter's Own was also one of the things we cut when we cut Jones for you. It's the same people, Mike Clark, um, uh, Jerry Z, and Tim Wynette, and Kevin. Uh, uh, and then Kevin, who's the greatest piano player on earth, is also the greatest guitar player on earth. So he's playing the, the, the piano solo and the guitar solo. Wow, nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, once again... Uh, when we got in to do that, we had no plan at all, none. We just, we just started musically fooling around. And I said, hey, there's a song I'd like to do. It's a Percy Mayfield song. And I played it for him, and we did it. Uh, it was great. We had fun. We also did a take on Nadine, which didn't work, but it was fun. Right. But, you know, we just... Uh, for going in with no idea other than let's just make music together. Uh, that's what happens. Right. That's what happens. If you're lucky, you know, if you're lucky, you, you, you come out with something. Well, and I mean, it, it doesn't hurt that you surround yourself with good guys, you know? Well, it, it, it's most important, most important for all. Because if you're going to sing, you've got to have something to sing to. And and if it's not right, well then you can't 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 sing it right. Right. Uh, but right is a broad word too. You know, right can be any. You know, I always tell people I can do my songs two ways, fast or slow. Any of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. Well, I mean that's what it's all about. And I mean, you know, it's a collaborative thing. Music is. You, you know, it sounds like you got a group of guys. That all are good listener. Everybody's in the in the same zone, kind of thing. You know exactly. We are, man. It's it's such a wonderful thing. We have so much fun. I'm having more fun playing live today than I've had in my whole life. That's great. And see, that's what it's about. You're supposed to be having more fun now. That's what it's well, supposed to be. I'm, I'm trying to do nothing but have fun. That's good. That's good. So, so, I, I deserve it. Absolutely. So so now tell me, you're hitting the road. Are you bringing these guys on the road with you? Always. Me and these guys have been doing this for the last five and a half years. Okay. So, All right. Nice. So nice. We're, we're pretty, well, we we got, got it pretty tightened up, you know. Nice. Nice. Just keep doing what you do. Just keep doing what you do. There's not a thing I can change about you. Just keep doing what you do. And, uh, you know, you, you work out uh, at least a few tunes from the new record, right? I mean, it's it's too good not oh, yeah, to play. We're doing most of them. Great, awesome. I, I that that warms my heart because I think this is some of your best stuff, man. So I, I can't wait. You know, sometimes it, uh, artists will put out a, a good new album and then they'll play one song from it, and I'm like, come on, don't do that. Come on. Well, you know, it's uh, the reports we're getting back from from uh, on radio and everything. There's a lot of stations that are playing five songs off, five yeah. songs or more. Yeah. And one guy said, I can't tell you which is my favorite yet because they're all my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the kind of that's the kind of feedback I want to get. Absolutely. 
Yeah, uh, I hear you. So uh, that, that's good stuff. So all right, so you uh, you got a CD release party coming out. Um, you know, we're uh, looking forward to seeing you here in uh, Newport, Kentucky slash Cincinnati. Um, you know, on on the on the you got the CD. Um, any any plans for like uh, you can do the vinyl thing on this? You get oh, we got the vinyl too, baby. Woo! All right, we got it covered, got it all. All right, yeah. All right, I mean, you know, I don't know if anybody them, you know, newfangled uh, MP3s or whatever. I don't know how you're going to get, you know, you get that signed or something. <laughs> you can't sign yeah, an MP3. I, I, right. I can't, I can't keep up anymore. I still call them albums. Right. Well, and they should be. And that's the thing. You know, you obviously took time. I'm sure you labor over what song should go first and what song should go last, right? That's the way, that's the old school way to do it, you know? Well, I think that's the right way to do it. But then again, I'm an old dinosaur, and there's a whole lot of people who would disagree with, <laughs> with me. But you know what? I don't care. You don't care. You're old enough where well, it don't I matter, know what right? I know. Right. And, and I'm and I'm always willing to learn more. So right, right. All right. So I understand. Not only is 2017 the time you got a new album, but you got a biography in the works. Is that right? Uh, well, it's done. It's going to come out in September. All right. Okay. So how, I mean, uh, that's one of those things that, um, you know, I, I've, I've been a part of uh, helping do that kind of thing. And, and that, uh, you know, it's like sometimes when you interview more than one person about an event, you get three different stories. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to read it. Uh because I don't have any idea what the other people are saying. Wow. Ah, okay. All right. You haven't checked it out yet. All right. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I have proofread the stuff that I've said. Right. You know, but not what other people are saying. So, you know, it's uh, it's exciting, but it's a little goofy at the same time. Well, you it know, should be. Hell, yeah. You know? I mean, come on. That's that's how, that's how you've always rolled, man. You're not you're not too serious. If you take your life too seriously, man, it just ain't any fun. So, well, you know, all you can do is one day at a time. That's right. So you got a title for the book yet or uh, uh one of the fortunate few. Okay. All right. Nice. Nice. Now, All right. Now I've got a song titled that. I've got an album titled that, and a book titled. And a book titled it. Right. And uh, and it's still valid. Right. Right. Nice. Nice. All right. Uh, and one more thing. You got? Is there any chance for Sandy Beaches number four twenty four? Uh... It's already booked, baby. It's already booked. Okay. All right. All they got to do is call 1-800-Delbert and hop on. All right. So it's just, just going. I remember I talked to you, I don't know, maybe five, six years ago. You're like, well, we tried to stop doing it, but it just keeps going, man. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I was going to I was gonna hang it up a few years ago. because, But I tell you what happened. Uh, when I, you know, I had heart surgery three, three, about nearly three years ago now. It'll be three years in April. I didn't have a heart attack, but I knew something was wrong. I went to the emergency room. They checked the blood for the enzyme that happens if your heart has a, a, a heart event, as they call it. Right. Uh, so uh, they found the enzyme. Mm, so they man. did a cast on me, and I was 95% blocked in the main artery. Whoa, man. And the next day, they went in, and and, and two days later, they, they released me said, had to be a big old heart shaped pillow and said this is gonna be your best friend for the next eight weeks. Because if you sneeze or cough, she just feel like it's gonna explode. Oh man. Anyway, I uh I recovered with so well and it's it's uh it, it obviously has has changed a lot of things in my life for the better. And uh, but I got feeling so much better. <laughs> Didn't do it. Right. <laughs> Well, I had no idea how bad I felt until I recommend heart surgery for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Unplug you, man. If you're clogged up, man, that's what you need. So that's right. All right. Well, uh, Delbert, it's been good talking to you, man. The new CD is called "Prick of the Litter" from Delbert McClinton, and we wish you good luck on it, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. You've been listening to Icon Fetch with Tony Peters. Want more great interviews? Head over to IconFetch.com. There, you'll find every interview we've ever done, plus CD reviews, This Day in Music, and a random album of the day. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Who is Tony going to interview next? It could be you. Send what you've got to Tony Peters. Icon Fetch, P.O. Box 292134, Dayton, Ohio, 45429. Or email Tony at host at iconfetch.com. 
Until next time, this is Joe Kelly. Have a great day.